We're back out here at the Big Lake today with my five tips to help you catch more bass this winter. It's the official cheat sheet for winter bass fishing. Stick around. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And as winter really sets in, you'll find fewer and fewer anglers out on the water. That means you'll have a lot of the fishing all to yourself. So what do we do? How do we maximize it? Well, I've got five tips that are sure to help you out in the wintertime. It's gonna help you out all year, but they are really, really applicable right now to the wintertime. And what are they? Well, we can get right to it. And the first and foremost thing you wanna do is go smaller. In the summertime, you can get away with those bigger baits, even in the spring and especially during the pre-spawn. You can get away with throwing those huge glide baits as those fish are really starting to feed up on big meals big craws, big bluegills, big shad. That's what the bass are eating. But in the wintertime, I like to go a lot smaller. Now the fish will still eat a big meal, but we're trying to entice as many bites as we possibly can. So that means we're gonna to have to appeal to a wider range of fish. And I do that by going smaller. Whatever it takes to pare down my presentation just a little bit to entice those bass because they are lethargic and they don't feel like chasing a big meal. We wanna make it as easy for them as we possibly can. So a lot of times that means we have to go just a little bit smaller. And combining with that is our second tip, and that is slow down. In the wintertime, as we've stated, those fish, well, they're pretty lethargic, especially as that water starts to get cooler. And when it gets downright cold in the 40s or even lower in some places, well, the fish, they just really don't feel like doing anything. So you have to slow down and make it easy for them. Does that mean that power fishing is off the table? Well, absolutely not. You can still power fish lipless cranks, square bills, and even deep divers in some instances, but you have to adjust your presentation. You're going to have to slow it down. Instead of burning your bait, you're going to have to incorporate much more pauses, more hard stops. Let that bait either sink or let it float because those are the things that are going to trigger those bites. The bass are watching the shad die as the water gets cold. When the water gets cold, well, you've got a lot of shad who are just going to die because they can't handle the shock to their system. As they die, they start to float down to the bottom of the lake. And those bass are going to feed on the dead ones. It's been shown before that bass will avoid shad that are even just a little bit kicking to go for a dead one because why that requires less effort and less energy spent is more energy they have for something else like reproduction and survival so it is a great evolutionary asset to be lazy and that's what helps out a bass so slow down your presentations when it comes to jerkbait fishing you'll notice that i give much longer pauses when i'm fishing a jerkbait in the fall and even in the winter than i do in the spring and the summer Whenever that water's warmer, those bass have the energy to chase down that bait. And they will do so. They'll have the energy, they'll be aggressive, and they'll be excited. In the wintertime, not so much. I slow it down. I fish it on a slack line. I give it slow pops. And that's what entices those bites. So you have to slow your presentations down. Oh, there we go. Ooh, that one's nice. Stay down. Stay down. There we are. And success. Kind of let that work its way through. And I can feel every bit of grass, every bit of hydrilla, every single piece. I got him. Ooh, that's a nice one. That's a real nice one. Ooh, look at that boy.
that's a really nice big thick bass probably close to three nice and dark this gloss smooth tongue so that's a large mouth which is what's in this lake I'm definitely getting a picture with this guy all right well as I was saying sometimes you just got to slow it down sometimes you just got to slow it down now my third tip might seem just a little bit out of left field and it kind of sort of is but this is the one time of year when I can really get away with some crazy colors. Other times during the year, you'll hear people say, match the hatch. And while I'm not really a big proponent of that, again, I like to make it easy for the bass. I like for my baits to stand out because I want my bait to be chosen over something else. And that's kind of what I've got in play right now. Reds, oranges, chartreuse. These are the colors of baits a lot of times that I'm throwing right now, especially if the water's got a little bit of stain to it, and sometimes it really does. So you've got a lot of lakes that are on drawdown. You've got a lot of water that's moving. Those nutrients may be stirring up just a little bit. Don't be afraid to throw those bubblegum worms. Or in my case, even those orange little bitsy bug jigs have been doing great for me. Sometimes jet black is the way to go if you want to play it a little bit more safe. But don't be afraid to mix up your colors this time of year. You will find that it can really pay off. It can be a huge benefit for you. And who knows, it could be a key, a stepping stone to confidence building for different colors throughout the rest of the year. So don't be afraid to give it a try. If right now is a good time for some really off the wall colors. Number four, well, this is one that I can attest to personally, and that is pay attention. You're gonna be fishing slower. So you might get a little distracted. You may wanna check your phone or look at your surroundings or anything but the pole that's in the water, your line or whatever. And this personally has cost me. As you can see here, recently I was fishing out on a different lake. We call it the Hatchet Lake because that's kind of what it looks like. And I'm fishing out of a little boat. And you see, I'm making skips with a little orange jig under brush. Was having a pretty good day, but I'm in the back of this boat fidgeting with the trolling motor and trying to make underhand casts and basically doing everything I can but pay attention to the bite. As a result, when I did get a really nice bite, and you see it here, I'm working this fish in. I'm bringing it back to the boat, and it's a pretty good fish. It's about three and a half pounds, but right here, right here, this spot, this is the instant I realized I was not going to land that fish. Because I was not paying attention, I looked down and I saw that I had that hook barely in that fish. It was a sloppy hook set that came from not paying attention, and you can see that I lost this one. It was 100% my fault. I should have been paying attention instead of fooling around with the trolling motor and fidgeting around with my rod. I should have been paying attention and I would have landed that fish. So learn from my experience. Pay attention to what your line is doing. That way you'll know exactly when to set that hook and you'll be able to get a proper hook set and bring that fish to the boat. And as you can see, after I lost that fish, I decided I was going to refocus my efforts. So a little bit later in the day, I'm flipping a little jig around this pond weed. You can see that there's open spots in it here, but right there, you see that fish roiled right in front of me. I knew they were active and I knew they were right there. So I hunkered down and I paid attention. I made the cast and I waited. And when I saw the exact moment that I needed to, well, this was the result. Got him. I got him. Oh yeah, come on you, that's nice. I got him. You're not... Oh yeah. You don't have a neck though. I don't need a neck. I'm going to boat flip his butt. Come on. He choked it too. Look at that. There you go. Oops, oops, oops. Don't want to bonk you with that. I had him good. On the jig. I told you that was your lucky jig. <laughs> So there you see, it was a very nice fish, and because I decided to pay attention that time, I was able to bring it to the boat no problem. That bass choked that lure, and I brought it in. You've got to pay attention, because if you let your attention lapse, even for an instant, you're going to cost yourself bites. Probably about two pounds, pound and a half, two, probably closer to two pounds, 
that's maybe about 16 inches. So, that's the way to go. That is a nice little fish. Yep, and we officially caught one. I got it on the black jig. Gorgeous, beautiful. That fish is cold. And there he goes. Now the last thing is one of the most important things, and it's something we've been talking about a lot recently, and that is be adaptable. Don't be afraid to change up your techniques. As a matter of fact, now might be a good time to try something you've never tried before, especially if you're looking to try something new, if you're looking to expand your game, if you've never fished a blade bait before or a jigging spoon or anything like that. Right now may be a good time to do that and get familiar with something different and build up your technique, build up your arsenal. Remember, this is a slower time of year for fishing. That doesn't mean it's fewer bites or smaller sizes. It just means we're slowing things down. That's all. So, as a rule of thumb, this is going to be the time of year that I'm going to change things up. I want to be adaptable. It's a great time to get out there and learn and really study that bass behavior. You'll be able to change things on the fly, and it'll really help your fishing game. So, don't get locked in a rut. Remember, always stay adaptable. So there you have it. That's my official cheat sheet for winter bass fishing. I find it's very helpful to make sure that I go through these items one by one every time I go out to the lake. It helps me land more fish. And I'm sure, with a little bit of practice, it'll help you land more fish too. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.